Hi guys, in the Temple Endowment Latter-day Saints Covenant to live the law of sacrifice. Now this might sound a little confusing at first because Christians, including Latter-day Saints, don't perform animal sacrifices like they did in the Bible. In fact, Jesus specifically commanded the Nephites to do away with animal sacrifice and to instead offer a broken heart and a contrite spirit. However, the law of sacrifice is an eternal principle and it is alive and well today. According to the church's handbook, the law of sacrifice as outlined in the temple means sacrificing to support the Lord's work and repenting with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. So in today's video, we'll be exploring how we can fulfill this law of sacrifice, namely offering a broken heart and a contrite spirit and supporting the Lord's work. We'll also explore the most important purposes of the law of sacrifice to build saving faith and to come to know Jesus Christ. So first, let's talk about the requirements for the law of sacrifice. It's a pretty common belief among Latter-day Saints that before the atonement of Jesus Christ, the law of sacrifice consisted of animal sacrifice. And then after the atonement of Jesus Christ, we replaced animal sacrifice with the requirement to have a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And that's found in 3 Nephi when Jesus comes to visit the Nephites. However, if we closely study the Old Testament and other scriptures, I think it becomes clear that the offering of the law of sacrifice has always been a broken heart and a contrite spirit. What's changed over the years are the ceremonies and processes that memorialize this offering. In Psalms we read, For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. As we talked about in a previous video on covenants, covenants consist of both obligations and ceremonies. In the law of sacrifice, we covenant to offer to the Lord a broken heart and a contrite spirit. But at different points in history, the Lord has adjusted and altered the ceremonies or rituals that memorialize the offering. In the Old Testament, the Lord commanded that these offerings of contrition and repentance would be symbolized through the ceremony of animal sacrifice. This sacrifice would vicariously represent the sins and repentance of the offerer and it would also point to that infinite and eternal sacrifice of Jesus Christ in the atonement. Elder Neil A. Maxwell taught that real personal sacrifice never was placing an animal on the altar. Instead, it is a willingness to put the animal in us upon the altar and letting it be consumed. After the great and last sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the Lord still required an offering of a broken heart and a contrite spirit, but he introduced a new ceremony to formalize it, the sacrament and other temple ordinances. Jesus Christ instituted the ordinance of the sacrament to fulfill the same purposes and effects of animal sacrifice. Through partaking of bread and water, Latter-day Saints witness to God that they are willing to take upon themselves the name of Jesus Christ to remember him and to keep his commandments. So the sacrament's an opportunity for saints to reflect upon the atonement of Jesus Christ and to reflect upon their own commitments to repent and become better. The broken bread and water represent the broken flesh and blood of Jesus Christ. But the broken bread also can represent our broken hearts and contrite spirits as we come to take upon ourselves the name of Christ. Through the sacrament, we imbibe, we internalize the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We take upon us his name and we take within us his sacrifice through partaking of the bread and water. And so the sacrament helps us to ritually visualize what it's like to become like Jesus Christ, who also had a broken heart and a contrite spirit. The other part of the law of sacrifice is being willing to sacrifice everything in order to sustain and support the Lord's work. And this is related to putting the natural man in us upon the altar, as Elder Maxwell taught. We've got to be willing to give up our selfish desires, our worldly identities, and our physical attachments in order to truly serve the Lord in his kingdom. If we truly love the Lord our God with our heart, might, mind, and strength, we should be willing to let go of many of the worldly and temporal things that we value. Sacrificing to sustain and defend the kingdom of God can take many forms and probably looks different for everyone. Prophets and apostles have talked about how some ways we can fulfill this law of sacrifice is through missionary work and temple work. Serving a mission requires a lot of sacrifice upfront and throughout the duration of the mission. It costs time, money, educational, professional opportunities, and a lot more but the Lord sanctifies that offering. Serving in the temple likewise costs time and effort, but it is part of the law of sacrifice in some pretty tangible ways. Temples of the Church of Jesus Christ have altars upon which we make sacred covenants and perform ordinances like the sacrificial altars of the Old Testament. So each time we physically or symbolically approach an altar in the temple, we can be reflecting upon the atonement of Jesus Christ and about how we can offer our hearts and wills upon the altar to God. 
the holy temple garment itself is also a fulfillment of the law of sacrifice. Some may view wearing the temple garment as a pretty substantial sacrifice of fashion or comfort, but it's also a pretty poignant symbol for the atonement of Jesus Christ. In the book of Moses, God sacrificed an animal to make coats of skins to cover the nakedness and transgressions of Adam and Eve. While we no longer sacrifice animals, we do wear the holy garment of the priesthood to cover our sins and our nakedness. And it's a constant reminder of the atonement of Jesus Christ. Honoring the temple garment is part of honoring the law of sacrifice. And if you haven't already, you should check out my video on the garment. Now, sacrificing everything to defend and sustain the kingdom of God is not going to always be popular. Sometimes it may require sacrificing reputation or what is socially acceptable. We covenant to defend the church, to stand up for truth, even when the policies and values of the church do not line up with the values and ethics of society. Theologian Austin Farrar famously quipped, though argument does not create conviction, the lack of it destroys belief. What seems to be proved may not be embraced, but what no one shows the ability to defend is quickly abandoned. Rational argument does not create belief, but it maintains a climate in which belief may flourish. And so as disciples of Jesus Christ, we do covenant to defend the church in whatever ways we know how. But of course, it's reasonable to wonder exactly how much we are required to sacrifice. And for the answer to that, we need to look no further than Jesus Christ himself. The temple teaches us how to emulate Jesus Christ in a variety of ways. Jesus Christ had a broken heart when he submitted his will to the Father and gave up his life as a sacrifice for sin. None of us will be asked to sacrifice our lives for atonement of all humanity, but we should be willing to seriously ask ourselves how much we're willing to sacrifice for God. Are we willing to give God our lives in service and worship? So now let's talk about why we live the law of sacrifice. Latter-day Saints covenant to live the law of sacrifice because one, it produces the faith necessary for salvation, and two, it helps us come to know Jesus Christ. Let's start with how the law of sacrifice helps us build faith. Joseph Smith famously declared, a religion that does not require the sacrifice of all things never has power sufficient to produce the faith necessary unto life and salvation. And in a similar vein, the Savior himself taught that he who seeketh to save his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. So Joseph Smith taught that it's only through offering everything upon the altar, believing that God's called you to do so, and believing that God's going to accept your offering, that true faith is forged. And to understand this, let's just think about times when you felt like your faith was most strengthened. Chances are your most faith-forging experiences came in the refining fire of adversity and trial. And many times this adversity comes without warning and without our own will. For example, if a family member dies, that wasn't you deliberately putting them on the altar of sacrifice. That was just life giving you a hard blow. You had no agency in that matter. However, our reaction to that adversity is what can really make or break our faith. And our reaction is also what determines our commitment to the law of sacrifice. When something horrible happens to us, something infuriatingly unfair, we can choose to blame God and estrange ourselves from him or... We can use that experience to willingly place that loss and that heartbreak on the altar and express trust in God. And it's equally difficult when we are given a choice to put something upon the altar. And we have to seriously ask ourselves if we have the faith to put that valued thing on the altar of sacrifice because we trust in God. Let's take the life of Jesus Christ as an example. Jesus Christ obviously was a person of immense faith and was able to accomplish great miracles and experience divine manifestations in his life. He had a vision of God at baptism. He was able to fast for 40 days. He was able to cure various diseases. He had the power to resurrect. But as we also know, he had to make great sacrifices. He had to submit all of his will to the Father and ultimately give his life as an atonement for all. And as we come to sacrifice everything we have, we can also come to know God and divinity in new ways. So that brings us to our final point, how the law of sacrifices helps us to come to know Jesus Christ. Everything in the temple points to Jesus Christ and the law of sacrifice is no different. The law of sacrifice teaches us about the atonement of Jesus Christ and it also helps us to become like him. Elder Ballard taught, the primary purpose of the law of sacrifice is to test us and assist us in coming unto Christ. The law of sacrifice helps us come into Jesus because it helps us live the first great commandment that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, might, mind, and strength. When we love the Lord our God with everything within us, 
we will naturally want to be in line with his will and we will want to sacrifice everything to get to know him. The Gospel of John teaches that this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And the father of Lamoni exemplified this mentality when he prayed, O oh God, wilt thou make thyself known unto me, and I will give away all my sins to know thee. Truly loving God with everything we have causes everything else to pale in comparison. Holy sacrifice transforms our mentality and puts our world in perspective. Elder Ballard taught, when we completely surrender ourselves to the Lord, then he will cause a mighty change in us and we will become a new person, justified, sanctified, and born again with his image in our countenances. In the Old Testament, sacrifice is associated with covenant making, but it is also associated with theophany or beholding the presence of divinity. When Adam and Eve were expelled from God's presence in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve offered sacrifice and an angel of the Lord appeared unto them and ministered to them. When Abraham almost sacrificed Isaac, an angel of the Lord appeared to him as well. During Christ's agonizing ordeal in Gethsemane, an angel manifested himself unto him to strengthen him. And when the Nephites in America humbled themselves and offered to God their broken hearts and contrite spirits, the resurrected Jesus Christ himself appeared to the Nephites in the most expansive theophany in recorded history. When we faithfully sacrifice, we behold the face of God. So to wrap things up, when we sacrifice in the name of the Lord, we are no longer focused on pleasing the world, but rather our worldview is now focused on pleasing God. Sacrifice galvanizes our faith in the higher power that's guiding us. Sacrifice gives us a glimpse into the atonement of Jesus Christ. As we sacrifice, we become more like Jesus Christ, who condescended below all and offered his broken heart and contrite spirit to the will of the Father. We can live the law of sacrifice by worthily partaking of the sacrament, earnestly repenting, doing everything in our power to love the Lord our God, doing missionary work, temple work, defending the gospel, and more. As we sustain the kingdom of God and offer our broken hearts to the Lord, he will endow us with power from on high. He'll bestow us with the faith necessary for salvation, and he'll help us become like his son, Jesus Christ. <laughs>